are going to start this new course that is the conformal mapping part 3 and we are learning about some special kind of transformations and the first one is w equal to z the power n n being a positive integer right so for w equal to z the power n let's take z to be as x plus iota y and then w is equal to u plus iota v this is in Cartesian coordinates right and in polar coordinates, we take z to be equal to r e the power iota theta, where theta is the argument, and w is equal to, let's say, rho e the power iota phi, right? w equal to z the power n. This is conformal everywhere. Now, what is the meaning of conformal? Conformal mapping is a function defined on a complex plane, which transforms a given curve or points on a plane, suppose in z plane, to w plane preserving each angle of that curve right now here w equal to z the power n is conformal everywhere it is preserving the angle except at z equal to zero why because we are having the derivative of w with respect to z at z equal to zero to be equal to zero if this derivative is non-zero then we say that it is conformal and if the derivative comes out to be zero at that point at the point z equal to zero then we say that it is not conformal right so let's check the derivative of w at z equal to zero so w equal to z the power n so derivating w with respect to z we get n z the power n minus one and this derivative at z equal to 0 is equal to n into 0 the power n minus 1 that is equal to 0 and because the derivative is coming out to be 0 that means it is not conformal at the point z equal to 0 right so that is why it is written that this mapping is conformal everywhere except at z equal to 0 right now for w equal to z the power n we are substituting the values in the polar coordinates so w is rho e the power iota phi and is equal to z the power n that is r e the power iota theta the power n so this is equal to r the power n e the power iota and theta right when we compare both the sides we are getting rho to be equal to r the power n and phi is equal to n theta which means in the z plane if I am having the radius, let's say 1, the circle having the radius 1, then in W plane, I am getting the bigger circle, right? Because rho is equal to r the power n. For the unit circle, I am getting the same circle at radius r equal to 1. But if the radius is 2, suppose I am getting this circle for radius r equal to 2 in the z plane. So in the W plane, I am getting this to be as 2 square for r equal to 2 i am getting rho to be as 2 the power n n is a positive integer so for n greater than 1 i am getting the bigger circles in the w plane right so conclusions rho equal to r the power n this means the circle mod z equal to r that is let's take the radius to be any constant c for different values of c corresponds to the circle mod w equal to rho that is equal to r the power n which is further equal to if I take r to be as c constant that it is c the power n right so it corresponds to the circle mod w equal to c the power n in w plane particularly the points on mod z equal to r equal to 1 if this constant is 1 are transformed into the points at unit distance from the origin in w plane so for r equal to 1 i'm getting mod z equal to 1 that is this circle and mod w is equal to 1 the power n that is 1 only so this circle is transformed into this circle for r equal to 2 i'm getting mod z equal to 2 the circle having the radius 2 and then mod w is equal to 2 the power n. For n greater than 1, I am getting bigger circles. 
Suppose for n equal to 2, I get mod w to be equal to 2 the power 2 that is equal to 4. That means this bigger circle. Right? Okay. Now about the angles. We are having phi equal to n theta. If theta is the angle in the z plane, then in w plane, the angle phi is n times theta, n being the positive integer, right? So suppose I'm having theta to be greater than 0 and less than pi by n, suppose. Then in w plane I get, just multiply this throughout n. So I'm getting n into 0 less than n into theta less than n into pi by n. That is equal to phi. So n theta is your phi. So phi is greater than 0 and less than phi. That means the upper half plane. Where i w is strictly positive. Because phi is strictly greater than 0. So i w should be greater than 0. So which means the interior of this wedge is conformally mapped onto the entire half w plane when i w is greater than 0 as the origin has been indented origin is not counted similarly if i take the domain to be theta greater than 0 less than 2 pi by n suppose that is the interior of this wedge this area this will be conformally mapped into let's check Multiplying this throughout by n, we get n into 0 less than n theta less than 2n pi by n. So, n n cancelled out, we get 2 pi. So, n theta is your phi. So, phi is strictly greater than 0 and less than 2 pi. That is, it is conformally mapped into the entire w plane above the real axis and also below the real axis. Provided you don't have to take the origin. Phi is not equal to 0. Right? So let's read the conclusions now. For theta greater than 0 less than pi by n, the interior of this wedge is conformally mapped onto the entire half W plane where the imaginary part of W is strictly positive as the origin has been indented. Similarly, for theta strictly greater than 0, less than 2 pi by n, the wedge in the z plane transforms conformally onto the entire w plane above the real axis and also below the real axis. Right? Okay, thank you.